Three at the back, you'll see those wing backs drop back into almost a five-man defensive line. But those are going to be how they get width today. So those two full or uh, wing backs are going to have a really, really important job today and a lot of running. Dylan Lane from Raleigh, North Carolina, who is preseason all Southern Conference. He will be wearing number 10. And we are off and running, and so is Rold Mitchell. Down the touchline, and it just took a left and went out of bounds. Rold Mitchell had a couple good looks against Maryland. It was tough. It was a very defensive battle between the two teams. It's always tough to play up in Maryland. I think there was 6,000 on hand for that game. As Niang tried to get loose, look how many white jerseys are around him as he's able to get free and play the square ball to Cummins. Forbes playing at the back left. He can play both, either the wing or the outside. Kojima also can play anywhere on the pitch. He has definitely been targeted. They know how important he is. You can see he doesn't get a lot of time on the ball. They immediately close in on him as Wake Forest with a switch. Here's Niang looking for Mitchell. Mitchell keeping it. And it just goes out of bounds. He tried to keep it in bounds, but unfortunately, wasn't able to do so. Yep. The marking by Luke Tandy, the grad student from Derby, England. Looks like Baba Niang will start this game on the wing. I'm sure we'll see him centrally at some point. But uh, Bobby Muse wanting Jose Kojima in the middle here to begin. Kojima, you never know where he's going to be, right, Ty? Oh, he's just he, can, yeah. he can be pretty much anywhere. He can play right back. He can play on the wing. But they like him at this number eight spot. He's allowed to go. He has free pass to go anywhere. Uh, watching the, doing the Louisville game on Friday, Sander Road could go anywhere on the pitch. This is spit out right at Cooper Flax, a little too far out in front and cleared away. As Cooper Flax gets the start, outstanding freshman last season, very, very silky smooth on the ball. Yep, and he gets with... Kojima at the number eight. He gets moved up into that number 10 spot, so he has some freedom as well. Good connection with Niang in Forbes overlapping. And now Furman, or Coach Allison, who talked to us earlier today about those counters. And they tried to put together one right there, but it was stifled by Wake Forest. Last year, Wake Forest did not have a single draw, and already they have two draws this season. Yeah, Ty, just to, it goes to show you, sports seasons are just a collection of small sample sizes. But we knew we were going to see that because of no overtime. Thomas almost got through. Is Cummings coming to recover and at least put a play inside the box. Cummings, he has been superior out there on that outside back position since he has got to start for 2023. And he does not look phased at all. He's got a lot great endurance. Good ball played by Kojima. It was out of bounds. So that explains why it was wide open right there in front of the six. <laughs> yeah, Furman saw the yeah. saw the whistle go and stopped playing. Here's a good look by our team. Just a bit heavy there. Kojima did a good job of trying to play it off. But yeah. Uh, Yo, know, Furman, Kyle, it, this is a program that has been, you know, a, a giant in the SoCon, always putting together great teams. And you can just go back and look at their history. Uh, the last time they played Wake Forest was in 2007. It was just a 1-0 win by the Deeks. And then that, of course, propelled them into the national championship over Ohio State. Uh, that was in the first round, I believe, of the 2007. But that's a tough one. You, you talk about that team was, for Wake Forest, very, very stout. But, uh, but uh, it, you, know, you go and play your first round, and you take on Furman. Here we go. Here's the, the first 
matchup since 2007. And it comes down just to one nil. That was it. Just how tight things are in postseason play. And Lake Forest made their way to Raleigh or Cary and then beat Ohio State for the championship. Their season ended last season against Ohio State in the first round. And so they have a little extra motivation, of course, this season. They did not like how that ended. And they have come out roaring out of the gate as Furman tried to put together an attack close to this final third. Flax, Hosey, another one of these leaders from across the pond. Furman already look a lot more composed than they did in their last game against Duke. The 6-0 scoreline in that game just did not reflect Absolutely. how Furman played, but they were very uh, chaotic, if you will, in midfield. They just were not accurate with their passing. Their first touches were a little bit sloppy. So already the Paladins look far more composed here today. Yeah, even Coach Allison told us that Duke's coach, Coach Kerr, even came to talk to the team and said, listen, that scoreline does not reflect how you guys played. You guys really did play well. And yeah, this is one of the things that Coach Allison, you could hear in his voice, is just trying to put people in their spots. You get 91% of your attack, your offense back from last season, a season that did not end up like they wanted. And then you still have to deal with the injury bug, right? But it's better to have it in the early than late as this one's a ride by Forbes. The left foot that just got over the bar. There he is, the legend, Doug Allison, longtime coach, produced a lot of great talent and brings in the 19th ranked recruiting class. Yeah, and you is. see most wins in, in SoCon history there. He, he got that mark back in 2007. <laughs> so that tells you he became the winningest coach in his conference, what, 16 years ago? So he's far and away clear in that department. Well, these two programs are close. Uh, they very well respect each other. Just have not played it a you know, true game. They usually get up exhibition games. There's a foul. Niang a little unlucky there. He got barged into from, you know, from his left and then had to keep up. I think that's either a foul on both players or a foul on nobody. He is Santian. He's creeped up, number 16. And he's Furman trying to knock the ball around. Here's Link to Holland. Serpa gets the start, another good returner. Oh, cheeky move, not sure if that was intended for Ogara. As the Deeks have possession, here's Baba Niang laying it in front for Forbes to run on. A little too far out in front, that was Perfectly set up for a slide tackle, and well done by Fraggle. He gets the start. Fraggle's a junior from the Lone Star State, Lone Star High School. There's four players on this team from that high school. That's what you call a recruiting hotbed or pipeline, whatever. <laughs> We do get lots of players from that area. Cummins. We were hoping to see their best recruit this season was Diego Hernandez. He's out, but uh, part of that recruiting class, 19th in the country, he is spectacular. Big get by Furman. Cummins. He was a big recruit. One touch by Roald Mitchell, a little too heavy on that one, trying to connect with Kojima. Deke's still just trying to get their attack to click. You see the the technique is there, the, ex, the, the ideas are there, the coaching is there. It's just about execution at this point. I think the good news, though, if you're Bobby Muse, is how that defense has played. I mean, you you really got to look at Maryland. Their attack is really potent. And for them to shut them out is pretty good. 
Now that finishing will come, especially with the weapons that they have. It's Trey South and not a long window or not enough time is Johnson, the freshman coming in. Before I could get the question out of my mouth, Coach Allison said, in regards to who is the best player or the player that stepped up that has kind of surprised you. Before I could finish, he said Johnson. Caleb Johnson, part of this freshman class that came in. We watch him, number 17. From Atlanta, Georgia. I'm sure he has run into Garrison Tubbs. He's from Georgia. Clipped up. Kojima try to reach Thomas. Press coming. Rob Mitchell about had it. Kojima gets it. Flax looks. Flax will take a shot with his right. Blocked. He thought about it. I think he was surprised that there was a bit of a window there in front of the 18 to put a blast on. New goalie for Furman. From last season, it was Ben Foster tonight. In this year, it's another player from across the pot. It was nicely set up right from the D. Maybe just one extra touch there. Yeah, well, I think one or two extra touches. It's exactly what I was going to say, Ty. He had the chance to take it first time, decided to take a touch. That was okay. The defender didn't step, but then he took a second touch, and that saw the space close down. There's Wake Forest freshman Travis Smith, Jr., Put into the box. Well done. On the other end of it was LaShawn Brown. Who hit and on the back of his head. But at least that link up was there. Yeah, but Bo Cummins defended that really well. He didn't have to win the aerial duel. He just defended it. And he knew that he was far enough away from goal that that would have had to be a pinpoint header to beat Trace Alfin. So he did enough defensively there. LaShawn Brown, sophomore from West Palm Beach. He was part of that Columbus Crew Academy. He's also the leading scorer of the Generation Adidas Cup in the under-17. And the first MLS Academy player to be part of that MLS committee for change. So he's uh, another good recruit, just a sophomore. Lane trying to create something. He had to pull back. Furbit trying to go to that right corner. Ty Collins, Kyle Bond on the call for you. Delighted you guys could stop by. This should be some good soccer. Do not sleep on Furman. This is a very, very talented team. Flax. Tight, tight quarters there. And uh, Wake Forest really worked on that in training last week. I mean, it was intense, Kyle. I, to the point where I had to get a drink of water because <laughs> I was sweating. It is hot out. That'd be fair. <laughs> O'Gara pokes one through. Forbes, can he send it? No, just ran out of real estate once again. It's almost just a little too much. And it goes out of bounds. A couple times we've seen that. Bobby Muse, there he is. Ninth season at Wake Forest. Got his 130th win. We were fortunate to be on the call. Four straight ACC Coach of the Year honors. Coach Muse, hey, back on his best quote from last season. It is not in this program's DNA to exit in the first round. That usually will echo throughout the program as well as the ACC on uh, the expectance of Superiority they have. Cummins. And the last time they met up with Furman, it was 2007. They did hoist the cup. This is spit out for Niang. Niang running on, and Mau Mau comes out in the point to the spot. Yeah, I'm going to love to see this replay. Hard collision there. It's all about whether he gets a touch on the ball or not because the goalkeeper has a right to the ball. Right. But if he misses, it's definitely a penalty. It was hard to see from here, but the, the referee had a really good look at it. 
Yeah, well, there's a push in the back, first okay. of all, from the defender. So take your pick. Jonathan Belinsky is the center ref. Yep, that's, the one. De that's definitely a penalty. The goalkeeper gets uh, all, all penalty kick up Bob and Ian. And, and you know, like I said, take your pick. There was a push in the back first from the defender. So either one, clear penalty, good referee. Five foot 11 from London, England, Cameron Mau Mau. And Roald Mitchell will do the honors. Can he put the Demon Deacons ahead, 1-0? He does, slots it, perfectly done. Textbook, bottom right corner, Deacons lead 1-0. You can't hit a penalty much better than that, Ty. I, I don't care if the goalkeeper guesses correctly, it's gonna be tough to stop that one. Perfectly placed in the bottom right corner. No stopping that. And the Deeks take a 1-0 lead, well earned. Clear penalty. Niang had been working hard. The Deeks had clearly been playing for him early, and then Roald Mitchell puts this penalty away. No chance. Second goal for Roald Mitchell on this season. He's tied with Baba Niang with goals here in 2023. I know it's early. I wonder if uh, Coach Buse said, Roald, why don't you take it? That uh, controversial non-PK call against <laughs> Cal. So this time you bury it. He did. So, Gold Mitchell puts Wake Forest on the board first, 1-0. See if Furman has an answer. They do have firepower, even with some of the injuries, to do so. And they cannot take this team lightly at all. And talk about, we talked about the injury bug. I mean, one guy that they're, they're going to be ecstatic to have back in the lineup is Jake Rain. I mean, this guy from Stoke, England, just has a nose for scoring goals. And he got a knock, but uh, he is expected to come back. And let me tell you, when he is 100%. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, there's just not a lot of pure goal scorers in this squad right now. So he is a really, really important piece oh, for He Furman. is a goal scorer. Yep. <laughs> but when you take him out of this team, they clearly lose something. Well done to keep that in play. Furman coming in tonight with eight days of rest. Their last match was August 27th. So they have had a nice little rest period for Wake Forest. They were in action on Friday night in hostile territory uh, against another legendary program, Maryland. Forbes try to connect with Kojima. That's well cut out by Lane. And now Furman trying to work getting their numbers up ahead. They pinched in as Johnson is the only one, the, the widest one here on the attack as Diaz-Santillan was making his way towards the final third. Here is Johnson. Johnson going up against another Georgia player with Colin Thomas. Thomas. Trying to put that up the touch line. It's last touched by Johnson. One nil on a PK by Roald Mitchell. Here's Holland. Holland, the captain, and Furman will now go to work on the right side. Uh, that was well designed, but Forbes really read that. That soccer IQ by Forbes is, <laughs> that's pro level. Flax running on to challenge lane. That's set up, Rob Mitchell takes it. Rob Mitchell 
try to get past. Great tackle. And that's taken away as Rold Mitchell. One man to beat to go 1v1 with Mau Mau again. Yeah, really, really good tackle. Because Mitchell had a, an eye there not only to get by the defender, but to maybe win a last man foul too. And instead, watch this tackle. This is well done by Mitchell to take it away. But right there, I mean, just perfect precision right on the ball. Some, you know, some players will be a little reluctant to do that because they're worried about getting beat. But he timed it just right and able to stop it with his back heel on a tackle. Here's a corner kick for the Paladins. See if they can find the equalizer. A lot of big bodies in there. One nil Deacons. Furman looking for their first shot. Diaz Santillan hooking that one just over the fingernails of Trace Alfin. It goes out of bounds for a goal kick. Trace. Oof, wrestling contest between Forbes and Johnson. Johnson wanting a call. Here comes that press. Travis Smith Jr. Yang, he waited on it. Had trouble reading it. Taken away by Furman. Now it's taken away by Ogara. Very, very talented freshman from Winston-Salem. Ogara has space. He'll use it. Gives it to Thomas. Thomas wants a look. Thomas getting into traffic and into the 18. Couple of hurdles. Thought maybe he was trying to bait a tackle. Look for a PK, but uh, unfortunately, no point to the spot on that one. And Ponce comes in, it's the Boston College transfer. He'll come in for Baba Niang. Hopefully, Niang is all right. Flax so good, whips it in. He was looking right in the direction of the machine. Kojima. Ponce. Ponce is very creative, too. Cummins. He looked up. He wanted to go the far stick, and nobody was making that run, so he plays his support to Tubbs. And once again, Wake Forest recycling and resetting. Ogara, number 33, under the radar as a recruit, but from right here in Winston-Salem. And he has started since day one at that six. Kind of that lighthouse that looks and scans across the, yes, the, the entire pitch. Number seven, Lloyd it's a very good seven. description. <laughs> it's, uh, and that's such an important skill for a player in that position. But he's played further forward in the past. He could do it all, too. That's Lloyd Wamu Snell, midfielder, sophomore from Basingstoke, England, who came from that uh, academy. Interesting story about him is Ogara goes down. But uh, he was Basingstoke Town FC first team player. He trained with the first team since he was 15 years old. And then they decided that it would do him well to go across the pond to the US and play college soccer. Cooper Flax in between two Paladins, and Flax gets called for the foul. Yeah, that, that club that you're referring to down in the lower leagues, outside the football league in the English pyramid. Right. <laughs> one, of the, one, tier. one of these days we'll do a pyramid show, everybody. <laughs> it is a big, oh, pyramid is... Kojima goes down the play advantage. Rode Mitchell sprinting. Rode Mitchell trying to get free. He goes down. Is there another point to the spot? Just checking on him. Yep. I think that's a, enough of a collision. The referee wants to make sure that they can separate. The question is, is how Mau Mau is. He is really shaken up. Yeah, I think he's... It didn't look like there was a massive collision, but clearly any hint of a head injury, the referee wants to make sure that they're all right. 
Absolutely. Well defended. Very well defended. Roll Mitchell was on his horse and had the pace advantage. But, yeah, and that's a foul. I would not be surprised to see the referee go back and show a yellow card for that foul. And that's yeah, shoulder. That's exactly shoulder. what he does. So, oh, the afterwards. Yep. That's the thing. Yep. Watch this. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, I get it. It, it. it is a contact sport, and he gets a he gets a booking, and that's good sportsmanship for the two slap hands. But you're gonna you're gonna have some physicality, and especially a crash like that. A yellow card has you just gotta be nine, mentally strong to not. Do something extra afterwards. Yep, looks like both of them got a yellow oh, they card. Did. Okay, so. so that's good refereeing. But I'm also a bit surprised. That should have been a yellow card on the Kojima tackle earlier in that. The pullback, yeah. 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 There, where the referee played advantage, as he should have. But that's a yellow, excuse me, a yellow card tackle. Well, good to see Mau Mau okay, though. Correction, was... there was no yellow card on Wake Forest. The oh. yellow card has been assessed on Furman, number two, Josh Hosey. So no yellow card okay. on Earl Mitchell, just a yellow card on Furman, which is going to be given to Josh Hosey. Yeah, and you know what? That's correct. That's the tackle on Kojima. So no booking for the collision little, over there. A little bit oh, of the extra curricular. curricular activity. But... There was the, t the the yellow card for the tackle on Kojima. That's that's correct. Ogara. <laughs> Furman trying to get some numbers down here as they will try to orchestrate some sort of an attack here to tie it up. Lane is the one that can do it. Tandy has to come all the way back. Goes with a long ball to the corner pocket. Travis Smith Jr. thought he was going to usher it out of bounds. Was able to connect with Forbes. Forbes lost it. This is played right into the penalty area. This could be a look. Still inside the penalty area. And a Furman player goes down. They're looking for the point to the spot. They're not going to get it. No, nothing in that, Ty. Absolutely that nothing. That was Krause who went down. And looking to space is Cooper Flax. Flax 1v1 with Mau Mau. Chips it. Oh, and good defense by Furman. That says a lot to the young players out there. Never give up. Keep going down there to help your teammate. Yeah, we'll take a look first at the other end here. It's it's just hip to hip. There's a little bit of contact there, but I, I don't I don't mind at all the referee letting them play. Ty, I'm going to tell you what though. Cooper Flax's shot was not on target, and it it's funny. it's the the defender didn't know that, right? So. Very good defending. But I like to play the, that at the end. The idea of how he's drifting, he knows where yes. the goal is going. That's where you want to go. Exactly. But I mean, you got to give credit for Furman getting back and not giving up on the play and saying, oh, well, that's the keeper's problem, yep. not mine. Absolutely. Never gave up on the play, trailed the, the run. He knew Flax had to take an angle, and he made him take the angle. But I tell you what, I'm Ponce. sure we'll get another look. Ponce, say, look at. He thought he had a look. He might have another chance inside the 18. A little step over into traffic and jumping over the slide tackle there is Colin Thomas. Watch this. As Flax. Yeah. Oh, he knew exactly. What we chip. Yeah, it was we, well defended. But for, we have the perfect angle here, Ty. Right. You could draw a line from our booth through Cooper Flax into the far post. It was curling just wide. You think so? Yes, okay. it was. But the defender didn't know that. So really well defended. And of course, it's Lane who gets all the way back, motors, and keeps it 1-0. Why that's crucial is Lane, who is a captain on this team from right down the street in Raleigh, North Carolina. Referee's got to take care of this because there's clearly some barking from the sidelines. Oh, a yellow card to Coach. Doug Allison. I don't think that happens a lot. I mean, he's a class act through and through. I mean, he's also a competitor, so I just um, 
A yellow card has been assessed. We'll take another look at this here, and this is a better angle. There is a little bit of contact there from Jelani Forbes. That would have been a harsh penalty. I, you've seen those called, Ty. It's a, little those called. it's a little optimistic to think that that's going to be a peak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you've seen those called, but that, there's just not a lot there. It would have been a soft call. Into the game for Wake Forest, number 12, Jose Perez. Perez has come in. And this goes out of bounds. Uh, Kojima wanted it to be a corner, but it will be a goal kick. Uh, just little over 19 minutes remaining in the first half. 1-0. The PK executed on the bottom right corner by Rold Mitchell to make it 1-0. Furman has had some trips down into the 18. Wanted a PK a couple minutes ago. Was not given. And the score line still remains 1-0. Over the top over Colin Thomas as Perez Exciting freshman, too. Perez. <laughs> Perez with a little dance move there to pull down a paladin. And to be fair, Perez knew where the official was, and he thought he could get away with it because of the <laughs> blocking. But good job by the official to see that. <laughs> So it'll be a free kick for the Paladins. 18 minutes remaining in the first half. Sixteen years since these two have collided. This is headed, but not exactly on the button. And Trace Alfin didn't quite get a hold of that one. Didn't put that one on the button either. Foul called, and this will be another free kick. Thomas, who is usually very, very quiet until he's on the pitch and wearing that jersey. Yeah, you know you're even, having a, even even when he's on the pitch is quiet. You know you're having a decent game as an official when both teams are mad at you. <laughs> Again, big bodies, and they are bunched right there at the penalty mark. Furman trying to level it up here. They're just under 17 to go in the first half. Here is the service. Bounced inside the 18. That will drive Coach Allison nuts as it bounces into the 18, and not one Paladin got a foot on it. The closest one was Wambu Snell, who was right there but couldn't track it down. Lane, Perez trying to connect with Flax. Good pressure again by Kraus, blocking that from Cummins. Kraus from Fenton, Missouri, played at South Carolina. He was our spotlight player, player to watch. His dad is good friends with a teammate of coach Doug Allison down to South Carolina. And that's kind of how he was brought to Greenville when he wanted to get into the transfer portal from Columbia. Here's Flax. He'll rip it. And Flax just a little too high. I tell you, when Wake Forest is going towards that goal, you always have to worry about our teammate that is in that crow's nest. <laughs> Every time as Flax sends that one on a ride just a little too high. But... Four shot by the Demon Deacons. Furman still sitting at zero. Yeah, they've had a couple of set piece chances, but overall the Deeks have done a really good job to keep a lid on the Furman attack. Good tackle. Great slide tackle by O'Gara. Oh. And hey. oh, are they calling it on Ponce or are they call oh there's a player oh, down. Okay. <laughs> he pointed right. To I was like, that's not a foul. Yeah, it looked clean to me. Yeah, yeah. He stopped it for uh, an injury issue. So it looks like 
The player down is Sebastian Serpa from Miami Beach, Florida. He transferred from Pitt a couple of years ago. Last season had 10 appearances, 216 minutes. Did not really compete with Pitt, but uh, was there in 2019, 2020. This looks problematic, too. He's holding his left hamstring. I think he's, uh, I don't speculate, but I think he's also had a knock before. And this is, again, that one, goes with the frustration with Coach yeah. Allison on how many times he sees finally get some players back in, and then the injury bug hits you again. Yeah, that would make sense because he had not played yet this year. They've, they've really had a couple of players who went down in preseason it's it's just so hard when you've got a whole plan for the year mapped out mm -hmm. you know and, and coaches expect injuries right like it's not you, there, nobody none of them are naive to the point where they think they can have an entirely fully fit roster yeah. that's not realistic but you know it gets to the point where you you start losing important players after important players and suddenly you look at the roster yeah yeah, oh. that's a that's a hamstring or a groin. It looks like he's rubbing the back left leg there. And you can see the frustration on his face. That's a player that wants to do anything he can to convince the trainer that he can continue, but is I is running it. out of I hate seeing that. Yeah, it's tough. I mean it you just feel for the players just trying to get back and all he wants to do yeah, this my, my heart really goes out to him. It's trying to get back and hoping that things are right, and then it pops back. Yep. And it's, man. Muscle injuries are, are just so difficult because you can do everything right. You can do the preparation. You can do the drills. You can train your body. You slowly ramp yourself up. You know, all that. And then it, it still yeah. goes. You know, you, you look at players at the highest level of the professional game. I mean, there's a player right now, Gio Reyna, who is is struggling mightily with muscle injuries. Christian Pulisic has struggled with it throughout his career. So it's nobody is yeah. is you know immune. You can have the best facilities, you can have the best trainers, the best nutrition, whatever, and still it, it's tough. This game just is so demanding. And hamstrings can either. They're, they're tricky because they, they, they will haunt you for a while. Sometimes they will heal real quickly, and sometimes they will fool you. They will yep. You will feel like you are 100%. You'll run, you'll run, and then you'll be fine one game, and then it, like, bites you again. It's just, yeah, it is aggravating. And it's not like something either that you can feel that you go, ooh, I maybe need to, you know, right. back off for a second, and then I'll be okay. It just one day it just goes, nope, you're done. Yep. <laughs> stretch it out as much as you can and yep. the coach says so how do you feel you're like well i feel great yep. and then make one weird movement and it's back at you hopefully he'll be okay though he's a well good defender and it tells you exactly how experienced and and constructed this Furman roster is dennison jones who comes in to replace him another senior just seniors all over this Furman roster I mean, they were very well seasoned, if you will, last season. So, and what they bring back, <laughs> I thought for sure Furman would be in the conversation to possibly win the SoCon. And that's why I was surprised when I saw the projection of them finishing fourth. Oscar Sears has come in, and he's going to get an elbow shiver to the back. He'll go down. That's Lane. Just under 14 <laughs> minutes remaining. <laughs> A little bit of gamesmanship there. <laughs> Deacons holding Furman without a shot. It looks like Furman has shifted back into a more traditional four defensive line after that injury. Kojima trying to get that one two and Thomas had his back to him plays back to Sears. Wake Forest trying to reset that was a risky pass. 
Jose Perez in the game as well for the Dukes. Two freshmen there trying to link up between Travis Smith Jr. and Liam Ogaro. I think the Paladins smelled the young lads there and decided to come in with the press, make them work. Kojima throwing it in. Sears ushers that one to Perez. Tubbs. Ponce. Oh, he is nifty. Ponce again. Sears. Give Camille Ponce so much credit there, Ty, because if he goes down there, it's a foul and a yellow card. And he skipped, a, he skipped around the tackle. He could have gone to ground. There was enough in that tackle that he could have taken it, and he stayed up. Always love to see that. Tufts trying to play that to his right to Cummins, and Cummins had to chase that one down a little bit. And that was the right ball to play. Cummins was just a little far behind. Here's the game for Wake Forest, number 23, Vlad Wallent. Vlad Wallent will come in for Thomas. Thomas. Starters after starters. Starters yeah. coming off the bench for starters. I mean, I've, I've asked you over and over again if I'm, if I'm wrong or I just see the depth of this team for Wake Forest. Just, Personnel from the bench can come in and immediately make an impact. Wallen's one of them. One of many. Yeah, <laughs> many. Yeah. I mean, you look at the midfield here for the Deeks, and the midfield alone is loaded. Even without Fessler. Yep. Mm -hmm. As well played in the box, and Trace Alpin comes off his line and tidies up. No hurry at all as the clock moving under 11 minutes here in the first half. Deacons with a win and two ties. Struck first against Cal. And Cal came back. They strike first here, but still have kept Furman without a shot. A risky pass back, but Mau Mau quickly clears it up to the halfway line. Landon Hill, number 19, that's another one of these freshmen that Coach Allison was really excited about. Played club soccer for the Crew Academy. He was a three-star prospect, 82nd ranked recruit out of the nation coming in this season. And why that means a lot is because, say, your top 50 or top, what, 20? they most likely will go straight to pros, right? So you go cut that in half, 82nd ranked prospect, end going to Furman, right? Well, if you produce Clint Dempsey and a bunch of other pros, I'd say I'd follow Coach Allison as well. Clint Dempsey, Walker Zimmerman, who's worn the captain's armband for the U.S. national team a bunch. spin into the box and it just flicks in over Trace Alfin and it is level at one. Diaz Santian somehow flicks it and it gets past Alfin to make it 1-1. That is the a, only shot of the first half. Oh, a gorgeous header. I mean just an absolutely gorgeous header right there from another experienced player and set pieces come back to bite the Deeks again. A perfect service ball on a platter at the far post and really beautifully done by Diaz Santillan because he backs into that and completely fools Liam Ogara. O Ogara thinks he's got a clean shot at that header and then out of nowhere, 
the 5-6 Diaz Santillan ends up beating him to the ball. Really savvy move. His back to the goal and then flicking it on and tying it up 1-1. Wake Forest once again, the last time they were on this pitch, they led 1-0 and then Cal came back with a late goal to tie it up and that's how it finished 1-1. Ponce try to keep it in. Ponce high in the air, still up for grabs. And they say it's out of bounds. Referee. <laughs> you pride yourself on keeping a team to no shots, the one shot they get. Yeah. And it's set pieces, and set pieces always seem to be a problem for not just Wake or anybody. It's just always a problem, especially if you have big bodies in the box. For sure. This Furman team has a lot of size. But that's not an excuse when it's the 5-6 the fullback, right, that scores the goal. Uh, it, it is always going to be an issue for teams that possess the ball in the way that the Deeks do. Now, the Deacons don't let the fact that their lead has been lost. They have been really, really good this year on fighting back. Now, last season, they never came back. And this season, they have shown that they have a lot of fight, even going back to the exhibition part of the season. Good switch into space. Swalin waits for it, sets it up nicely, and continues to move into the center, back to Sears. Sears, Ponce, Ponce, left-footed shot, blocked. Perez ushers it down to his foot. Look, Ponce again. Look how many bodies behind the ball Furman has right now. Ten white shirts behind the ball, all in the penalty area. That is really difficult to get through. Yeah, Coach Allison also said they knew they were going to have to kind of soak in the attack and constant threat by Wake Forest. That's why he was really big on those counters. Of course, the goal they get is off a set piece. It's Travis Smith Jr. sliding it to the left on the far side to Wallint. Nice turn. Look at Leo Carino. Perez had to reach his boot out for that one, lost it, and now Furman back with possession. Tandy kept going. I think Tandy was looking for some help nobody came out it's close to the touchline and fortunately for Tandy and Furman it is a throw in for the Paladins <laughs> Furman with confidence in new life after tying it up on their only shot of the evening. Wallint wants to split the defenders, looking for a handball. Plenty of time for this attack to get down there. Coach Muse also asking. Well, that wasn't a handball. Ponce comes out, good minutes by him. And then you bring in an electric player like Chase Oliver. Well, if you're just trying to get to the finish line of the first half, as far as being tired, that's the last person you want to see come in. Maybe Kojima, too. But <laughs> 25, but Chase Oliver will run you out of here. As Wallin trying to connect. Just could not complete that pass. Wake Forest has done a good job of just keeping it on Furman's side of the pitch. Through ball, that's not going to have enough legs to get to Garino. Good pressure, not allowing him to turn. Is able to finally connect. Good pressure by Cummins. Good numbers. Cummins, Cummins, 
all the way on the other side and see immediately that sink is clogged. Sure is. So Sears. many numbers there. Sears trying to get that one to Oliver. The chemistry between Chase Oliver and Oscar Sears is uh, pretty remarkable. Let's see if that connection can work here in the closing minutes of the first half. Chase Oliver improvising. And once again, I think Chase Oliver making his way into the middle. I think he's expecting some run, and he didn't get the run, so that means he's kind of stuck. Fortunately, though, Wake Forest is able to get a free kick. This is a very dangerous spot for a free kick. Yeah, there was a touch on the ball there, but too much of a hack on Chase Oliver after the ball had gone. Dangerous free kick here for the Deeks. We have seen them put these on frame so far this year. So do you expect maybe a clip, clip of a, a free kick I think and try to, again, there. bait the keeper and then crash with the two giants of Garrison Tubbs and Ogara, although Ogara is behind the ball. Now this one's going on frame, Ty. All if right. they can get it over the wall, this one's going on frame. And then hope for, if they don't, it'll be ref uh, deflection exactly. and then rebound. Some kind of uh, save, recycle, whatever. It looks like Ogara's got the shooter face on. He fires! Oh, man, he just missed by the skin of his teeth. <laughs> oh, 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 Too much man. pace for his own good, Ty. There's just not enough bend on that one, but that was a vicious effort just wide. Good hit. Oh, Gara, maybe, maybe a half a foot shy of giving the Deacons. Yeah, if that. The 2 1 lead. Write that down. We will see that again. Liam Ogara, six foot three. Play with NC Fusion. Now the Furman Paladins. They're not done. They want to steal a goal here and put Wake Forest in a deficit going into the locker room. Ogara, head up, trying to connect with Wallent. Wallent was on the race up to that corner. Hosey, Hosey going up against Ogara. Hosey, this is shot and then put over the bar. Trey Salpin did a good job by letting that one fly. But Hosey, good work by him on moving that down to the final third and playing it on that flank. I believe that was Wamu Snell who put that shot. One minute remaining. One in minute the first remaining half. in the first half. Deacons and Paladins tied. What a piece. Ogara inches from making it 2-1 on a free kick. Cummins, 42 seconds, Cummins. Back to the support, as Agara head up looking. Will he go over the top? He does. Puts that one in the bucket. Wallen. A lot of traffic. Just a lot of traffic when you're trying to make a probing pass there as Mau Mau does the right thing, makes the catch, and then falls down to waste some time and let this Nine, tick down to the end eight, of the first seven, half. Six, five, a lot of promising four, touches in the box. Three, we don't two, have that stat one, to show you, but uh, there's been quite a, a plenty of of touches in the box, especially for Wake Forest. But off here in this second 45. And once again, it is level. Not nil-nil, but 1-1. It'll be interesting to see how these teams come out here in this second half. Looks like Baba Niang has started this half in the middle of the field. Thomas out wide. This is over the top. Chase Oliver gets the start in the second half. The response is the key. Right, Kyle? I think that's 
One of the things that was emphasized in the locker room, Escribano has come on. First time this season. We've seen him come here at home. Great to see him back. Niang, he can hit it. Roll, try to turn. And tight quarters again. Lane off and running, trying to get a quick counter as Wake Forest was able to get some numbers back. Escribano, starter last season on the outside back position. Very clever with the ball. Rolled Mitchell, not turning, able to play it to the channel to Chase Oliver, and Chase Oliver will give it his own little sizzle, but it's straight to the chest of Mau Mau. I, I think that was actually supposed to be a cross, just simply by where everybody was positioned. Right. That would have been a tough shot from that angle, and you had Rolled Mitchell, or, yeah, I believe it was Rolled Mitchell just right there on the doorstep, just miss hit the cross. And, and Ty, that's gonna be an emphasis for this Wake team here through the second 45. With Furman really packed in the way they were at the end of the first half, how do you beat that? Yeah. Width and crosses. And that's tough, because this is a very big Furman defense. You're going to have to win some aerial duels. But I would not be shocked to see the Deeks go with a, a wide emphasis here in the second half. That may be part of the reason that Bobby Muse has decided to bring Baba Niang into the midfield instead of out wide, is now you've got a player in midfield who can drift out wide at times. All right, channel again. Cummins, insert. Here's going to be a rip and just sailed over. I think it was last touched. It had to be deflected. So it is a corner. Here comes the corner Kyle confirmed four. it. Thank you. Yep, that was uh, a sizzling yeah. effort, like you said, and was deflected off the Doing defender the right in front of him. Wake Forest hunting. And the official is. There was an extra ball on the field. Oh, okay. I thought he was. Going to discipline, get a stern talking to somebody's in the box. So a corner, Wake Forest trying to get a early goal in the second half. Tough ball played. Niang had to go toe to toe. And it's knocked up field, and Trey Southard way off his line comes up. And Wake Forest will once again reset. Yeah, and that's wasteful. I, you know, I see what the pl the, ex the plan was there, but it was not executed well. They're trying to get Baba Niang for a, a cross from deep rather than the lateral corner, and it just was played short on the return ball. Niang. Here's Kojima getting wrestled down, had to push back. I mean, that's not advantage. No. It's clearly in front of the official. But that's that's a second chance today where the Deeks have a chance to go down and win a foul, and they elect to stay on their feet. It's good football. As Scribano gets shoved, keeps on his feet, draws the double team. Thomas sprays it to Kojima. Kojima back to Thomas. Thomas looking. Escribano will get it. He'll look. Curls it high in the air for a stick. Chase Oliver had a good look as well as Rolled Mitchell. The Deacons right back at it. And you can see the pointing to try the left channel. Here's Thomas. Niang. Got past two defenders, just couldn't get past the third. Holland trying to get quickly up the pitch. Wake Forest with a extended timeshare down here on this final third, but still can't get a goal. They're tied 1-1, unless they can come up with something here. Rold Mitchell can do it. There's Rold Mitchell. Tried to scoot on by on the right side. Good defense by Furman. Lane sends this one up. Look at Cummins. Whew. Gotta be 
A lot faster than that. They tested him and Cummins won that race. Yeah, just a really good recovery and tackle. So crucial of an outside back that can track down like that. That recovery speed, huge. Vermin, because that really takes away counters in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And you witness those in the EPL, how quickly they get up. And if you are just beat by a foot, two feet, you're, you're toast. But here, you know, if you got a track star on the outside back, you're able to recover it. It does wonders for your club. Oh, nice clever back heel that's able to connect. Is Furman now threatening? And this is sent just wide right of the frame. Well, good link up for Furman. Courageous by Trace Alfin to not even give that a look. That wasn't that far wide, Ty. <laughs> you, you see a goalkeeper who just doesn't even give it a go. And you're like, oh, that's not close. And then it just fizzes by the corner. <laughs> he's good at reading it. That's why he's a very talented goalkeeper, I guess, right? Yes. It might stress you out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the other end of that, where you think it's going wide and it's up in the back of the head. And you just are frozen still like yeah. a mannequin. Yeah. Rooted to the spot. Colin Thomas, oh, man, that was on the doorstep in the front yard. Wide open, and Rob Mitchell just couldn't put it in the back of the net. Yeah, I mean, you, you're not going to get better service than that. And it's awkward because it bounces right in front of him. But I don't, Did I don't it know pop how up and to hit say him? this guy. It's got to go. That, that has to go in the back of the net. Did it pop up and hit, a, hit his knee? Yeah, it got him right in the thigh, I think. But any way, any way you can redirect that ball, the net was gaping. Good, solid step by Garrison Tubbs. Held his ground, a very risky pass. Taken away, Furman can do something here. On a very, very soft touch into the box. Baba Niang goes down, and Baba Niang will draw the foul. Baba Niang is a foul machine. I mean, it's unbelievable how he baits defenders into winning fouls. He just touches the ball right across the face of the defender. And, and slips right in front. He says, <laughs> yeah, and he says, either foul me or I'm by you. And those are the only two options. He's like a car that brake checks you, right? He's rolled Mitchell. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> rolled Mitchell. Baba Niang. Mitchell scores. It's goal number two for Rold Mitchell. And the Deacons have the lead again. If at first you don't succeed, Ty, try, try again. He couldn't get the, the chance a few minutes ago to end up in the back of the net. He couldn't get this one to go. Baba Niang sees it saved, and Mitchell is there to clean it up. How really, I really bright team goal here from the Deeks. How ironic is Roll Mitchell now is the lead scorer. Niang thought he was, and then it was saved by Mau Mau. Roll Mitchell, the second wave. Hard to stop that. That Wake Forest goal was assisted and by Wake Forest. You see Diaz and upset on that. And so will have to try to tie it up with another set piece from Santee. And I think this time Wake Forest will mark and watch out for 16 kind of poaching on the outside. Well, it wasn't the prettiest of goals, but doesn't matter. You're crashing the goal. One stopped. You have another attacker to thump it through. This time, Rold Mitchell, after a PK, he's got a brace on the night. Leading score for Wake Forest now with three. Here comes Kojima. He's in the fifth gear, and he gets tripped up. Kojima, hopefully he's all right. It's 
how crucial he is to this team. You, you don't hear his name a lot, at least here in the beginning of the season. But it's what he does off the ball. It's stretching the field by his speed. Yeah, and, and positioning, too. Got his body in position to win that foul. It's all about getting position to not just win the foul, but gain possession. So this will be like a short corner for the Demon Deacons. And if they can score this, we'll give them a two-goal cushion, which will be huge when you're going up against this Furman team. Oh, that was a good ball, too. And now they Oh, and now they've read it. Hand. So you, Thomas on that ball that was sent on a rope straight to the penalty mark. And Kojima was rushing on I'm to not, send it in. I'm not sure what the issue was. I guess the referee hadn't started play yet. Kojima has been tangled up a couple times. Looks like he's tangled up with Landon Hill. So we'll do it again. Let's see what Wake Forest draws up. Two-man wall. Thomas hovering. Still in the box. Half volley clearance, but right to Cummins. And Wake Forest will once again try to find a pathway to test Mau Mau. Chase Oliver wasn't even in the fifth gear, and he still made it look as if the Furman player was in slow mo. Ogara. Old turn plays Travis Smith Jr. <laughs> that is a smart play. Drew the double team, knew that was going to be risky, played it back to Trace Alphen. Kojima. Oh, beautiful ball. Chase Oliver running on. Little step over. Allows the bodies to get in. Oliver saying, I want it. And he wanted to take a shot in the end. Gets the deflection right back to Escribano to reset and recycle again. Oh man, Oliver had Baba Niang in acres of space at the top of the penalty area as he entered the final third. And that Coming. was the opening. There's Kojima, he was into a pocket, played the one touch to Chase Oliver. Chase Oliver drawing the double team. Wanted to play it back to Kojima. Kojima was not expecting it. And Cummins, an awkward bounce. He'll have to track it down. Look at the speed and the defense by Cummins. We got a handball. Yeah, they, they, the referee tried to play advantage there to Furman. The ball popped up and hit Bo Cummins in the hand. That's why it bounced off. Yep, but once, it, uh, once he had won the ball back, referee had to pull it back for the foul. Just joining us, Wake Forest went ahead 1-0 in the first half with a PK. Rold Mitchell did the honors. A late goal in the first half by Diaz Santian. Made it 1-1. Wake Forest looked roaring out of the gate here in the second half, looking and searching for an early goal, and they got it, of course, by Rold Mitchell this time. It was off a deflection from the goalkeeper. It looked like Baba Niang was going to score. And Rolf Mitchell followed through behind him and made sure it counted. And here comes Doug Allison, the head coach's son. He will come in. And Dowler, who also come in, he was all tournament team for the John Rennie Invitational in Durham. He scored against Elon. Scored the 84th minute for Furman to win over the Phoenix. Here comes Chase Thomas, double teamed. Lane <laughs> did a good job on tracking that down and following his teammate. Nowhere for Thomas to go. Yeah, and, and Colin Thomas had tons of space to run into at first. He's, nobody stopped ball, so he just kept filling the space and eventually was closed off. Building again from the right channel. Oliver Cummins. Travis Smith Jr. into the pocket and played it 
to the left to Thomas. Escribano. Niang. Mitchell. Niang in the box. Is the point there? No, it's not. Man. What do you think? Yeah, no, that's the right call. He dispossessed Niang at the last possible split second. That was last gasp defending at its finest. Man. I mean, the, the meandering run here on the one-two. What do you think? <sighs> it's tough. I, I think he gets the ball. It was it's that, like a Kai Havertz play, right? Yeah, yes, that's right. Yeah, we saw that this weekend in the Premier League. Very similar play. That was nullified on VAR after being called a penalty at first. Niang didn't get the penalty. And he's back here again on the shoreline of the 18. Escribano, oh, he had a good look at it. Here's Cummins. Oliver with plenty of space over there on the far right. Rolled Mitchell in Thomas trying to stay on side. Furman doing an excellent job keeping their shape. Look at this link up. Back heel. Niang trying to get to. And a body right in front of him. He just couldn't hurdle over him. But uh, another good one two with Niang and Mitchell. In the crowd tonight is uh, a Furman great whose brother played here at Wake Forest. So this is a bit of a rivalry between the two. McNeil Cronin, in, who went to Furman, was an outstanding player for Coach Allison. He's from Winston-Salem, and his brother, Deacon fans know about Sam. Sam Cronin was a part of that 2017, that last, the last team to face Furman. Of course, Cronin, Sam Cronin went on to the professional ranks also at an international appearance. Oh, nice scoop up played by Mitchell, but too heavy and Chase Oliver was seeing if he could save it. Ty, let's take another look at this penalty shout from Baba Niang. You, you see the tackle here, it, it comes between Baba and the ball. So it's an awkward tackle, and it is close. I mean, Luke Tandy could not have come closer there to conceding a penalty, so but you just barely gets the ball. He, he slides almost on top of the ball rather than dispossessing Niang. I, you've seen those called, but I like that the official shaded uh, to the side of no penalty. It is close, though, Ty. I, I know it's, it's, you know, everybody's definition, of course, of PK, just yes. like of handballs. But what what's the definition for you, and what do you know as your to me, knowledge of a PK? Yeah, to, I mean, it's it has to be a foul, right? So if you get the ball and you're there, it, the play is not dangerous, to me, it's it's fair. Uh, and I would say, barely, he got the ball there. He sort of slides in between the man and the ball and a little bit on top of the ball, so it's not a perfect slide, but he does just enough not to concede the penalty. Kojima, with his back to goal, wanted to try to back kick it over to that corner, and then Kojima had to hustle down, to track it down and get it back, and now he is on the pitch, and some... Yeah, it's gonna be a booking pain. here. So it goes to Diaz and Tia. Who's from Charlotte, North Carolina. A yellow card has been Oof. assessed on... Just kind of stepped on Kojima's foot there, really late. Diaz and Tia had a uh, hat trick when he scored uh, three goals, of course, hat trick when Furman beat Winthrop. 
a couple years ago. Don't often see that from a fullback. He can play it up on the wing, though. That was last year. Yep. He was tied for the team in lead with 11 points as a fullback. So Coach Allison still looks young and spry. And here we are at Surprise Stadium. Imagine that. Well done. I'm proud. <laughs> this one goal separates these two teams. Earl Mitchell has a brace. And hoping that that is enough for the game winner. But of course, Wake Forest would like to add a little bit more. Jeffrey White, a freshman who is very dangerous from long distance. Watch him. We'll see if maybe we will get a chance to see his cannon for a foot. Remarkable young man from Tampa. What a shift Bob and Niang put in, Ty. I mean, he is just so devastating on the ball. Tandy. Knew that window was closing in. This is trying to get over the top. Garrison Tubbs. Great always defense. in the right position. Yeah, and not only the right position, but you saw there his mark who was chasing the ball. That's Lloyd Wamu Snell basically expected him to play it back to Trace Alfin. Yeah. So Tubbs felt him cheating that pass back a bit and instead made a bit of a dangerous play to Travis Smith Jr., but made it work. Kojima still trying to get that touch back. You can see it, it comes and goes. And he's he's all over the pitch, which is good, but in that touch we saw last season, still trying to get that back. Travis Smith Jr. The poise, the confidence. I mean, just expels from him. Here's the other freshman, Jeffrey White. Sprays it to the left to Thomas. Thomas, 1v1, left-footed cross. And maybe that surprised Jeffrey White. I think so. <laughs> I think it surprised everyone. That was an, a howitzer off the foot of Colin Thomas. I mean, an absolute laser. White did everything he could to redirect that on goal, but goodness gracious, I don't think anybody expected that. 12 shots for the Demon Deacons. Three for the Paladins. Ogara using his size, getting up. Kojima forcing the attacker to stay on that touchline. Basically turning the touchline into another defender. Brazil was known for that in 1994. I remember that for that World Cup. And that's that was their philosophy. And that's why they won it. We'll do it. On top of just copious amounts of talent. Right. <laughs> that helps too. Romario, outstanding. That one. The Beto. Up over the top. And offside call. Flag is up. That was impressive. It was. It really was. <laughs> I mean, Brown able to keep that with his body in the air, turning, yep. and able to keep it on his knee and with the head. Settle it a little bit. Yeah. And head, head it. That skill. This is uh, pretty much like every Furman and Wake Forest match in this history of the series has gone. It's been tight, one goal, 
And even Coach Allison told us, she said, we, we just have a history of playing Wake well. And so far, it may be a little off-tilted with the shots, but just one goal is the difference between these two teams. And I'm telling you, SOCON beware, because this Furman team, even when they're not 100% healthy, they're dangerous, and especially if they start getting a goal score, as that was dangerous, and Tubbs over to clear it. Tandy tangling up with Roald Mitchell. Curly. Uh-oh, Hosey. Oh, ho, ho, he really wanted it. In Escribano, a veteran, flag down. Roald Mitchell going 1v1, waiting for bodies to get in the box. Mitchell finds a spot, and he gets tripped up. Will that be a point it is? And that is really savvy by yes. Roald Mitchell. Yes. And there's a second yellow. That is, I'll tell you, I'm and glad you said that, Kyle, because, again, He's waiting for bodies to get down, right? The angle shuts. He able, he's able to get away from the defender and draw the foul. So it's, it's also, Ty, yeah. on the flip side, a really silly foul because that ball had, go, had been lost. The Mitchell's touch there was a bit heavy, and the goalkeeper was collapsing. And it's really not a smart foul. And I think... The second yellow here was for descent. I think that's Connor Dowler who's been sent off. I mean, that touch there, it's definitely a foul. I don't know what Furman's upset about. You can't touch the referee like that. Yeah, that's a, str so that's a, Oh, wow. oh, okay, so they gave a straight red for a last man foul. I don't know about that, Ty. That's harsh. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, it's um, it's there. The, the goalkeeper's there. Right. That's not a last man foul. But what do you think Dowler is upset with? I and think it clearly looks like a penalty. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not what sure. What is he arguing? I, I'm, I'm sure he's arguing the penalty. I yeah. mean, it's <laughs> there's a slight drag back. I, I get sure they can argue. But you can't touch the official yeah. like he did. He, he grabbed at the official's shirt. You can't do that. It's an immediate yellow. I, I think the red is harsh. I, I, I don't see that as a red card tackle. It's not dangerous. It's not a last man foul because the ball is rolling to the goalkeeper. I, I, that's brutal. Now check this out, Kyle. Almost a year to the day. Rolled Mitchell. We'll have a chance at a hat trick. He scored one against Winthrop. In that 5-1 victory. Back September of 2022. Here he is. A chance for another hat trick in 2023. Back-to-back -back years with a hat trick. As Rolled Mitchell from Montclair, New Jersey, stares down Mau Mau, the keeper from London, England. 12 yards away for old Mitchell. It just comes naturally. And it does there. There's a hat trick two years in a row for old Mitchell. The kid from Montclair, New Jersey, out of the Red Bull Academy, is a bull on the field, all over and scoring at will. And, and he bags another blistering penalty. I mean, this is just blasted into the top right corner. Mau Mau was sent the wrong way, but there would have been nothing he could have done about that either. Two really, really good penalties from Roald Mitchell. And there you see Luke Tandy, who is on the sidelines and will have to sit the final 20 minutes of this one out. Look at this penalty. Just blasted top corner. Yeah, you know, that would have taken a world-class save. I do like uh, the strategy, though, by Mau Mau. I mean, it, the goalies really are stuck there. They don't really have much of any type of advantage at all. They can't move. 
and you got to move your arms a little bit. And, you know, sometimes you kind of do what you can do and to try to distract the kick taker. It's kind of like a free throw shot. Why not? Forbes is back in. The Deeks well ahead. It's the first Wake Forest Demon Deacon to score multiple hat tricks. We'll get this to him. Second and Forbes bounces off the bench and scores. All drive and finish. Number 14, Jelani Forbes has made it 4-1. Yeah, what an immediate impact. Forbes started this game at fullback and here just pops off the bench and pops in front of goal. Liam O'Gara with the assist too, how about this? Into the middle, O'Gara driving forward and finds Forbes on the vertical ball. It's just too easy there, man up this Deeks team. Bobby, Bobby Muse during training makes them play against two or three extra men. Yes. So for them to be playing up a man is almost too easy for them. So Roald Mitchell getting back to a <laughs> little nugget. Of course, Forbes interrupted it, but uh, is the first player for multiple hat tricks since Scott Seeley did back in 03 and 04 after Roald Mitchell scored on that PK for a hat trick tonight in this contest. And Forbes, who a, a normal starter did not start the second half, came in here with under about 20 minutes remaining and the first touch, he sends it into the back of the net, making it 4-1. And Forbes with a great stick. Forbes looks motivated as Kennedy's also come in. Kennedy, a big body that can hold the ball up, and Kennedy hits the turf. A lot of soccer to be played, though. Four to one. Kennedy into a pocket, continuing to surge ahead. Forbes looked to be offside, so Kennedy didn't play him, at least I don't think. Furman being down one man, still not at all giving up. They set this one up nicely. On a last minute, look who's there. Back on the pitch for Wake Forest. Good to see is Prince Impanza, who I'm trying to get 100%. It's just, it's, it's, I don't know, it feels surreal to say, but he's the main starter. He's coming in after how dominant this defense has been. Yeah, so. and, and you talk about, you know, the depth of this team. We've had discussed that a few times today. And Ponza, a bit of an injury problem. Travis Smith Jr. comes in, a freshman, and gives Bobby Muse a really difficult decision now, right? Yeah, it's a decision that I do not envy coaches to have, uh, but it is a luxury as well. And it just kind of shows the type of environment that Coach Moose has basically extended or even amplified since coming over. It's next man up, and once you get that opportunity, you know, in your mind, even though your teammate, you feel bad for your teammate that goes down on an injury, you're like, I'm here to stay. This is my spot. You got to have that mentality. If you yep. don't, I don't want you on my squad. Forbes. Escobato. Kennedy came up, played it back to the support to Ogara. And 
This game was tight. Wake Forest really kept it down here in the attacking third. Orchestrating attacks after attacks and hoping to open up Furman. And they have now. And something you don't want to see even in the game of soccer is the PK. But when it's clear as day, you know, you can't argue that's just part of the game. Escobar sliding it up to Kojima, trying again. Kojima wants it right back. Lane baited him. Kojima. Kojima looking. Oh, he wanted one extra touch to give it a smash. Just uh, under 15 minutes to go. Clever one touch. Pass over to the wing. Flat. While in. Oh. He was shaking. Split the defenders. And then lost it. Wake Forest also, remember, I mean, the depth will really pay off, too, because Furman with eight days of rest since their last match. Wake Forest, of course, played Friday, and that was on the road up in Maryland. Saturday was a travel day, right? Sunday had to come back, do some training. Monday, I don't know if they trained or not, but it's right back. And then getting ready for a match. Yep. Not much time to... Which sometimes is a good thing in soccer. Not enough time for you to go over and look at your mistakes and dwell on them. It's let's go, go, go. Now Wake Forest has been go, go. Especially in this second half. Leading 4-1 to one of a Furman team that I really think is underestimated. This is a good team. And especially when healthy and a flag is up is Forbes. They have gone a little too prematurely. Well, the Deeks looking very promising that they will get another win in the win column. Lane shouldering up with Kojima. Lane is just, that's the type of player you want in the middle. Not scared of contact, not scared to have the ball, does clever stuff like that, is a leader vocally as well as the, he leads by example and you tell me you got a team that brings someone like that i feel really good i mean coach allison said told us the spring was great they really thought this year was going to be remarkable it still could be they were completely healthy in the spring and they were doing work is ogara had that for a minute, poked it away, and Cummins will send it up. And Wake Forest will try to get their numbers down, but that's tough. That's part of the game, but you, you look at some, something like a masterpiece, right? And then, <laughs> then you're ready to go, and like, this is going to be great. And then like, someone tells you, oh, we got this guy, this guy, this guy's not ready, this guy's not ready. Yep. And then it just... Put your head down and say, Ugh. "Coaches know that's their job, right? right. To, keep, to keep the team going, but it's got to be frustrating to some extent." Kojima off balance. 
Under 11 to go. Three goal cushion for the Demon Deacons and a whole bunch of fresh legs coming in. Yep, line change here. How about Jake Swallow? Oh, good to see number 24 back on the pitch. Man, talk Sixth about season. Yeah, talk about a tough road for him. I mean, how important he was. He was vice versa of how Kojima is. Kojima is the motor, runs all over the place, go, is the energy ball, right? Jake Swallen in that 2021 20, year, the calm presence was able to calm things down for Wake Forest. They just seemed calm and confident. And then you add that with 16, you get a nice little mix. I mean, just... Just watch how he sees the field. It's, it's a sight to see. Good to see him back. Mancia also on. Kennison as well. Yep. Johannes is also there. There he is. Good step yeah. by Prince and Ponza. This could develop into something as Forbes is into space. Left-footed cross was deflected. Running on is Vlad Wallint, but Holland holds it up and plays it back. I think the good thing, though, if you're a Furman fan and Coach Allison is you play this brutal schedule, which it is brutal. I mean, Duke, take on Wake Forest, and then you look into the future of what they've got in front of them. But it's prepping for the SOCON action, and then if you are battle-tested against superior talent like this, SOCON is talented too. Don't get that mis misconstrued, but very. But, uh, you know, it just helps you kind of get ready for SOCON play. I mean, UNCG is doing the same thing. You see the, the teams that they've played, Cal, Louisville, uh, Maryland. And, and that comes with a lot of growing pains, too, especially if you're trying to bring in new parts, new, new pieces. Yep. And uh, UNCG, who's picked to win the SOCOM. But... Uh, how about Roll this, Mitchell? He's won the night. Yeah. He's rolled Mitchell. He's... Hat trick here, two penalties, slotted that first penalty perfectly inside the bottom right hand corner. Here, cleans up the mess on the save off a Baba Diang shot and then deposits that one top right corner. How about the little tip of the cap from Roll Mitchell? The Deacon hat. And of course, right after that. Forbes jumps off the bench and says, I want to get involved in this party. It makes it 4-1. to one. Deacons not hitting cruise control quite yet. Swallen and Johannes. Mancia and Forbes. Furman still doing a good job of keeping their shape and not allowing Wake Force to penetrate into that 18. Everybody is up. You can see Wake Forest is kind of frustrated with that. They're trying to slot one, have somebody run on. Johannes running on, bringing out three defenders. Able to play it out wide to Kedison. There's a freshman right there who also comes from FC Dallas Academy, highly recruited. To Broff, who was actually, by some publications, picked as the best recruit in this class. Forbes will go out. Jumped on for about uh, 15 minutes and got himself a goal. Johannes. 
I'm interested to see how this works. Looks like Jose Perez will move to left wing. Oh, watching that develop between Flax and Swallen. It didn't quite end up in the manner that we thought it would be, but uh, you can see both of them are on the same page. I, I tell you what, I'd love for Jake Swallen to have a hit there. He, I know he tried to feed it through on the one two, but and he can hit it. He sure can. Yeah, he, <laughs> That's yeah. why I said it, yeah. you know, like of all those players to have a shot from outside the penalty area, he's one you don't mind taking that shot. It's been 16 years since these two have collided. And it actually counted. And Wake Forest looks like they will come away with a victory like they did in 2007, except a lot more goals. 1-0, the final in that game. And it's 4-1, though. <laughs> Swallen. Swallen already putting out some some tricks of his own out there. Johannes scanning. Kennison gets it. Setting up nicely. Garino. Johannes. A lot of bodies. And a karate kick by <laughs> Jake Swallow. Guess he's healthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That was, was really assertive by <laughs> Jake Swallow getting in there at least to get a touch on the ball. Kinnison. Here's Flax. Swallow. Everybody pinched in, a lot of bodies in that center part of the pitch. Look at tight quarters and passing and connecting, yep. which, well, like well, I said, was exactly what they worked on a lot in the training this past week. They tried to take that quickly, but the referee was not uh, not having it. This is what happens when you get this many midfielders field at one time. And it's just a little, all, little ticky tacky. Yeah, a little bunched up, a lot of one touch passing, yep. ping, 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 and definitely a foul. Impressive and a very trafficked area. A lot of traffic inside that 18 for them too. There's only one yep. thing that's going to happen on this free kick time. We know. <laughs> and that's Jake Swallow's going to go for goal. Here it goes. And he rips it. And <laughs> just on the outside. Ooh. We got fooled a little bit because it was on the opposite side. He's trying to just sneak it through into that right bottom right corner. Just missed. Really good to see him back on the, the pitch, though. Great. Great to see. Worked very, yeah, very hard a player who's had some really tough injury luck through his career. I think it takes, it takes a real strong human being to hang around your team when you know you're out for the year and just give support by emotional support, vocal support, but the whole time wanting and yearning to get back on the pitch. And now he, he is here. And, and what was great was he didn't try to coach, you know? Like, yep. he didn't he didn't try to be a, you know, of course he's a leader, but he didn't try to do too much in that regard. He was just part of the team, and that's all they needed from him. Garino to put the cherry on top. He does! 5-1! An absolute smash! And Garino has opened his account for 2023. What a rip time, my goodness. He had 
help and support to the right, and he said, I got it. Don't worry, I'll take care of this. Whack! And blasts the ball into the back of the net with a ripple. Goodness gracious. Look at this, he's got help to the right and says, nope, I'll take it, and just slams it under the crossbar. Oh, and to put insult to injury, that ball comes from the back of the net and pops right back to the keeper. Yeah. After just watching <laughs> yeah. that one go in. With how much pace yeah. it had on it. Another tough result for Furman here is yeah, and an unfair it's, one, yeah, too. It, it's the same thing with the, the Duke match. The it's just, you know, they kept this thing tight. You lose, a, you lose a player, you have to play with 10, and also having to deal with injuries, too, on top of that. I mean, I, I, I just think going down to 10 men was so harsh yeah, was, on them here. I, I just, you hate to see the match finish like that because it was such a fun battle. It was such a a good contest between the two. You know, the Deeks had had taken the advantage, but Furman was really hanging tough, and it just, it, it made it even harder. On the road against a ranked, a good ranked Wake team. Just add, it, it just adds adversity when there's already plenty up against it. Well, to make it a little bit more exciting and to add the cherry on top, a beautiful golazo by Leo Garino.